r slash rules horror posted by u slash loop locks the ray feewood ranger guide by nick jacobs entry 5 the gray maiden now listen to me young man you be gentle with that poor girl i know that she looks and sounds dreadful but it's by no means her fault here i'll give you lots of dried lavender i find it quite calming myself mabel the gray maiden is one of ray feewood's more cooperative inhabitants and therefore we often assign her to newer rangers Unlike many inhabitants, the Grey Maiden does not actively wish to harm, charm or kill humans, since she was once one herself. This isn't too uncommon in Rafi Wood, but most of the other previously mortal inhabitants are a lot more vengeful. Unfinished business and all that. The Grey Maiden doesn't want to hurt you, but fear is a powerful thing and when bolstered by magic, the consequences can be fatal. Before your first visit to the Grey Maiden, read the following rules thoroughly. And if this is your first job, reread the basic rules for navigating the woods before you go you'll need to reach her in one piece first. The Grey Maiden appears as an extremely gaunt young woman with pallid grey skin and red ringed eyes. White hair trails down to her waist, the ends frayed due to her habit of trying to rake out moths and tangles that have formed in it with her fingers. She wears a long sleeved grey gown and more notably, a white cloth that loops tightly under her jaw and is tied in a knot on top of her head. When you first encounter her, the cloth will be filthy, stained from saliva, blood and dirt. Upon closer inspection you'll notice that although held in place by the cloth, the Grey Maiden's jaw is badly broken, it juts out to the side and the flesh is marred with bruises. Her neck is also weak, and she struggles to hold her head upright, causing it to flop straight back or onto one of her shoulders. Your task is to help the Grey Maiden remove the cloth which binds her jaw shut, and retie it with a fresh one. Before you leave, be sure to collect these vital items from the equipment cabinet, beeswax earplugs, a comb, a lavender posy and a clean white linen cloth. 1. The Grey Maiden lives near a large mossy rock on the side of the river. You can easily find this by following the path that runs parallel to the river, heading north from the cottage. You will be able to see the rock from about 500 meters away at which point you should put the beeswax earplugs in. Made from the wax produced by Mabel's bees, they are highly, although not entirely, effective at blocking sound. Walking through the wood with the earplugs in is not recommended, as many inhabitants will see it as an ambush opportunity. 2. Don't be alarmed if you do not immediately see the Grey Maiden, since she often wanders around a nearby flower field. Wait by the rock until she arrives. If she finds you somewhere that she wasn't expecting you to be, it will badly startle her, and your task will be a lot harder. 3. When the Grey Maiden first sees you, she will quiver uncontrollably before rushing at you and grasping your face. When she does so, remain perfectly silent otherwise, she will snap your neck. Stay calm and hold up the clean linen cloth so she can see it. This may be difficult depending on the angle her head lies at, but she should already be moving it to look at you so she will see it. She will then realize that you're a ranger and release you. 4. Never speak to the Grey Maiden. She is already a nervous individual, but the sound of other people speaking is particularly upsetting for her. Mabel once explained to us that in her mortal life, the Grey Maiden was a servant for a lord, before she had the misfortune of overhearing something she shouldn't have. The Lord's retaliation was so severe that she now fears what others may do to her if she learns their secrets. 5. Once she lets go of your face, look at the Grey Maiden's hands. If they are still, proceed to step 7. If her hands are trembling or she is touching her hair, she'll be too anxious to have her cloth changed immediately refer to step 6. 6. To calm the Grey Maiden, sit down and produce the silver comb and lavender posy. She should sit next to you when she sees them, since she finds both to be extremely calming. Hand her the posy, and try to gently detangle her hair with the comb. Once you start, you should hear the Grey Maiden's breath slow to a steady rasp as she takes in the scent of the lavender. Continue for 5 minutes and then pause. If her hands are still trembling or touching her hair, continue until she stops. When she is still, proceed to step 7. 7. Guide the Grey Maiden to sit in front of you and sit behind her. Loop your legs around her waist to secure her in place. Have the clean cloth somewhere you can easily grab it. Once you're prepared, take the following steps. 7a. Gently untie the knotted cloth securing the Grey Maiden's jaw, while keeping it taut. 7b. When you have untied the knot, release the cloth from her head. When you do so, you'll hear a click as her jaw drops open. A moment after this happens, the screaming begins. 7c. Time is of the essence. While your earplugs will prevent the screaming's worst effects, it will still reach a volume that will force you to cry out if you are too slow. 
If she hears you, the Grey Maiden will panic and rip herself from your grasp, her volume increasing until your ears, and eventually your lungs, rupture. You have approximately 30 seconds to retie the fresh cloth around her head. 7D. The angle of her broken jaw may make retying the cloth difficult, as will her frantic thrashing, but be forceful and firm. She is physically quite weak, so keeping her still shouldn't pose much of a challenge, and she doesn't seem to experience pain from forcing her jaw shut, regardless of the angle. 7E. Once you have her jaw shut, the screaming should stop. Keeping the cloth taut, retie the knot tightly. 8. Once you have finished tying her cloth and depending on how difficult the changing was, the Grey Maiden will appear both relieved and distressed. It is clear that the awful screaming she emits during the changing is involuntary, and she seems to genuinely regret causing any of us pain. If she grasps your shoulders, she is seeking forgiveness and you must grant it. Smile and gently remove her hands to communicate this she will calm down quickly after that. If you fail to do this, the Grey Maiden's distress will heighten, causing her to hug you tightly before stumbling into the river. The river next to the rock is extremely deep, and she will sink, clinging to you like a vice until you drown. 9. Once the Grey Maiden has settled, collect the soiled cloth and return to the cottage. You can stay with her for a while longer, and she will certainly appreciate it, but she will eventually wander off in search of fresh flowers. Next story of this video. The Rayfeewood Ranger Guide, Entry 11, Pucklings. Stalking through the brambles or feasting on rotting carrion, pucklings are a common sight in Rayfee Wood. On their own, they are relatively harmless, too focused on finding an easy meal to pose a threat. Leave them be, and they'll do the same. The only exception to this is when they decide to build a nest that's a little too close to Mabel's apiary for her liking. Mabel's presence is normally a sufficient deterrent for the pucklings to not bother her beehives, but having the safety of their nest nearby makes them a lot bolder. An organized swarm of the little buggers can clear a hive of its honey and inhabitants in less than a minute. So whenever Mabel notices a new nest being built near her hives, we're ordered to deal with it. Pucklings are tiny creatures, about an inch tall. Their head and torso are humanoid with the exception of their three bulbous black eyes and a pair of prominent pincers which protrude from their mouths. From the waist down, the puckling's body resembles a red bulb, covered in black bands and tapering into a curved stinger. Two sets of papery wings protrude from their backs, which enable them to fly with surprising agility despite their bulk. Your task is to destroy a specific puckling nest near Mabel's apiary she will provide a map with coordinates to the side of the nest. Be sure to also collect the following items from the equipment cabinet, a balaclava, face mask, gloves, ski goggles and a small sledgehammer. Mabel will also leave you a fresh sheep's head in a sack as well as a paper parcel filled with offal, please do not unwrap this inside the cottage. 1. Before you leave the cottage, ensure that you are wearing enough clothes to cover your skin completely, and close off any potential entry points using straps and bands from the equipment cupboard. Tuck your trousers into your socks and your shirt into your trousers. Put the balaclava, mask, gloves and goggles on. This may seem excessive, but you absolutely don't want a puckling to see your weak spots. 2. Before you approach the hive, put the sledgehammer into the sack with the sheep's head and close it tightly. 3. On the way to the site, keep an eye out for the nest. It should not be difficult to spot. Pucklings nest in the bodies of creatures who they have been able to capture and immobilize. The nest will be covered head to toe in small holes and may appear to be twitching. Try not to be too alarmed by this the unfortunate creature is almost certainly dead and if not, near death. This initial observation is also essential so that you can mentally prepare yourself. Pucklings are greatly offended by those who react with disgust towards their homes, so make sure you've gotten a good look at the nest from a distance before you make your presence known. It doesn't matter if the nest is in fact, the corpse of a fellow ranger who went missing earlier in the week, you're going to need to stay calm. 4. Listen carefully. Although they are also capable of human speech, pucklings communicate to each other using a high buzzing noise. However, if you hear something that sounds like a child giggling, leave immediately. Run as fast as you can straight back to the cottage. Pucklings only make this sound to express excitement before a hunt if you're close enough to hear it, you are the target. 5. When you've found the nest, stop about 10 meters from it and call out. It doesn't really matter what you say, as long as it is polite. Once they realize that you're there, you should see a few of the pucklings emerge from one of the cavities and fly towards you. As they do, you should bring out the parcel of offal and announce that you are here to welcome them to their new home. Pucklings are greedy and arrogant creatures who demand respect from those around them, so this welcome should ensure your safety for at least a few minutes. 6. Unwrap the parcel and place it on the floor Save a few big scraps of offal in your hand before stepping back. At this, 
the rest of the pucklings should emerge from the holes in the nest and descend on the offal to feed. This may make the nest itself twitch violently, so you should probably avoid looking at it. 7. During the feeding, a few pucklings may approach you and tug at your clothes. They will make an opening if you let them do this, so you need to distract them. Offering a piece of the offal you save should be sufficient. Pucklings prefer harvesting from live prey, but they're still going to take a readily offered chunk of meat instead of fighting you in the hopes of plucking out one of your eyes or ripping off an earlobe. 8. Wait until the pucklings have almost finished feeding, but there are still a few scraps left. At this point their bulbous tails will appear swollen, and their movements will be a lot slower as they fight for the last pieces of meat. At this point, you should approach the nest and open the sack. This may alert a few of them. If they start to fly over, hold up the sheep's head and tell them that it is their second course for once the offal is finished. This excuse should be enough to satisfy them, but hold on to the head. 9. You might notice a ruby red viscous substance oozing from the holes in the nest and feel a strong desire to taste it. The pucklings may even encourage you to do so, claiming that it's honey. Now they're not entirely wrong, but you still don't want to eat it. It has a powerful paralytic effect on creatures who aren't pucklings, giving them ample time to unwrap and eat you at their leisure. If that doesn't put you off, keep in mind that the honey is mostly made of coagulated blood. 10. Once you are no longer being watched, quickly produce the sledgehammer and smash the nest. You will not have enough time to completely destroy it, but make sure to pound flat any places that may house cavities, such as the head and ribcage. If sufficiently destroyed, the body will no longer be regarded as a suitable nesting spot. If you hear the pucklings start to giggle while you are hitting the nest, you need to leave immediately, even if you are not finished. 11. Run straight back to the cottage. The pucklings will give chase, but you should be able to outrun them as long as they are sufficiently bloated. 12. As you run, a few pucklings might latch onto your clothes using their pincers and start ripping the fabric. If you notice one on you, try to drop and roll over it before continuing. This should crush the clinger. If you try to remove it with your hand, you will likely end up ripping the fabric yourself, exposing your flesh to the other puckling's sharp stingers. 13. If you do get stung, you must keep running. You now have about 10 minutes to reach the cottage before paralysis kicks in. 14. Once you are a good distance from the nest's initial location, hold up the sheep's head and throw it as hard as you can away from you. With your nest destroyed, the pucklings will be anxious to obtain a new one, causing the majority of them to fly off after the head. There may be a few stragglers who continue to chase you, so keep running. 15. When you reach the cottage, get in through the window as quickly as possible, then shut it. If any are still chasing you, the St. John's wort flowers in the window box should deter them. 16. If you have gotten stung you will soon have trouble moving. The paralysis should last for an hour at most, during which time you may feel a painful bubbling sensation under the skin close to the sting. Remain calm and focus on your breathing. While it is extremely unpleasant, you are not going to die. Unless you got stung more than five times, in which case, I'm afraid that there is nothing we can do to help you. 17. When the paralysis wears off, you may be alarmed to see a small patch of bubbling blisters surrounding the place you got stung. Do not try to burst them. If popped, the holes left behind do not close, permanently marring your skin. These holes can easily become infected and are ideal entry points for pucklings or other small creatures to burrow into. Go to the pantry and retrieve a small yellow pot of sap from the top shelf. Carefully apply a small dab to each blister. They should go down after a few minutes. Thank you.